location setup entries, tips, suggestions, and rules. In this session, we're going to give you a few ideas on some tips that you can use to help you set up your enterprise versus your locations, a couple of suggestions that you might want to try, and talk about some basic rules. So on my screen on the left side, I have my enterprise and on the right side, I have location number one. So let's go take a look at some setup entries. So in the enterprise, when I go from the home ribbon to enterprise setup, you're going to see the setup for your enterprise down the left column. So here's what happens in our locations. This is going to be the various locations that you have connected to your enterprise. I have three separate locations. Within these locations, if I open these up, I'll be able to tell the system what I want to send to each location. So here we're sharing contacts, inventory, service packages, inspections. Remember, we can look up data from other locations and various sales departments. I have two profit centers, automotive and counter sales. Any other charges that I want to send? So here I want to send up a other charge. I can check the box, hit OK. And what it will do is it will send that other charge to that particular location. So again, you can control these various functions per location. Okay. So how do I know what has been sent? from the enterprise to a location. Let's go to location one. We're going to go to setup. The telltale in here is the gray shaded area. So if you notice anything that's in gray, that just simply means it's coming from the enterprise. Over here is my profit centers on the left. Here I have the two profit centers. And again, that's going to match the two profit centers. Categories, same thing. So always look for the gray. If you see the gray, you know that it's coming from the enterprise. If it's not gray, that means it was entered and set up at a particular location. Let's talk a little bit about uh, locking. There are some things you can lock at the enterprise. So if I go to margin thresholds here, you'll notice that on the service packages under my oil service and tires, I'm locking this particular field. If I go to my other one, see I'm locking the sales. So what does that mean? What that means is if I go to my location where I sent this to, if I have something that is locked, I can't change it at the location. Oops, let's go down here to part sales. So if I open this up, you see I have a box here that says it's locked. So when I set this margin up, this threshold, I locked it at the enterprise and in turn it locks it at the location. So you're going to find this on various items in your setup. So whenever you see a lock, that means you can control it and lock it down at the enterprise. Another place this is commonly used is an inventory control. So if I come down into my inventory and let's just say we go pull up some of my inventory here from the enterprise. I open these lines up. I have the capability of locking it here. So locking it here, what this does is this locks down the cost and the sell price. So anytime there needs to be a change to it, I have to do it at the enterprise, at the enterprise. Sometimes you're going to make changes in here and you want to see them right away or fairly quick at the locations. 
let's go over here to service categories for example so here I have my two service categories I may want to change a name for example so remember the system does an automatic sync about every 15 minutes so what if I don't want to wait 15 minutes I can go in here let's go do an edit and let's just say we're going to take off ENT here Now, I'm not going to see this change immediately here, okay? So one way to kind of speed that up is you want to close all this up. Go to contacts, pull up a contact, any contact, it doesn't matter. Just open it and do a save. So here I open this contact card and I do a save. See, what I'm doing is I'm pinging the server. So it's getting it to refresh a little bit faster. So if I go over to contacts here, pull up a contact, I say any contact, doesn't matter. Open it up, save it and close it. So let's go see what happens. Let's go back to my enterprise. There's my profit centers, my service categories. I have my change here. Let's go to location, service categories. And now you see the change here. See, if I didn't do that, it would take a good 15 minutes usually for that to change. That's a one way to speed it up. Sometimes you're going to have entries in here that go automatically out to all the locations. What does that mean? Well, if I go in here, for example, and I'll say I go put a labor rate in. So at the enterprise, I entered a fleet labor rate. I came in and hit add, gave it a code, a name, and a rate. And again, see, I can lock that rate if I wish. So what happens is it just automatically goes out to all the locations. So again, I have a retail rate at this location. I have a whole goods rate at this location, but the fleet rate is coming from the enterprise. So when I put it in, if I don't have a choice to where it goes, it will automatically go to all locations. Now, sometimes you're going to have some of these entries where you can pick and choose. So that would be a specific location. So for example, we have a pricing profile here. We set one up for fleet, labor, but you'll notice here there's another tab, okay? So anytime you're setting up any of these entries, you want to look for this tab where it says locations, and then you can pick individual locations you want to send it to. You can select here. See, and all I do is just turn it on or off, whatever I want. I can add, edit, delete. Once I hit OK. So now this is only going to be available at location one and location two, but not at location three. Another place you're going to use that quite extensively is in the work orders set up with concerns, inspections, and services. So if I go open up a service package here and I open this up, again, you're going to see a locations tab. Now, when we set up the initial settings and load your database, a lot of this stuff will actually be automated and we will load it in and it'll be set up for you in a template. But that's not to say you can't change anything you want. So if I come in here and say, well, I don't want to use this particular service package at a service specific location, I can go in here and I can change it. I can go locations listed below all locations except so I can say go to all except a particular location and then it will not go to that specific location another feature that we have in here are tags 
So what is a tag? Think of a tag as some type of a sticky note that I can apply wherever I need to use it. These are going to be used in conjunction with your rules, with your rules. Okay. Could be a other charge rule, could be a pricing profile rule, could be a labor matrix rule, could be a tax rule. Okay. So just about any time you have a rule in here, you'll always be able to utilize tags. So by setting them up at the enterprise, it's going to make the tags immediately available to all the locations and you can use them at the various locations. You can use them in the enterprise, in the setup, and at the locations. So you have contact tags, you're going to have work order tags, part line tags, labor line tags, and even sublet line tags. And they can be used for all sorts of things. But to make something in here, you just simply click what you want. If I want to go make a tag in here, I certainly can. I can just hit add and just call it what I want to call it. So then I have that tag that I can apply wherever I need to use it for any type of material line. So if you kind of take the time to set your tags up at the enterprise, it'll make it easy and that way you can utilize them just about anywhere you want. Now we're going to set up a work order tag here for another charge. So we're going to hit add. So I have a other charge that I'm setting up. It's called snap finance. I want to be able to utilize this at the various locations. So I'm going to hit OK. So now that'll be able to be used at any location I so choose. If I were to go to an individual location and do that, then it's only going to be available at that specific location. So you do have a distinct advantage by setting up tags here. So just to give you a quick example of how a tag works, we've created a work order tag called Snap Finance. We have a other charge. Let's open this up. It's a fixed amount for invoice of $10. And at the location, we have sent it to location one. So let's take a look at location one. I'm going to open this up, make it a little bit easier to see. So if I go into my setup, now I'll see a other charge called Snap Finance. And again, it's gray. Gray means it's coming from the enterprise. So if I double click and open it up, there is my other charge. Now, in order for this to work, I have to apply a rule. That's going to be sales rules. Sales rules are always set up at the location for other charges and taxes. So if I go to Snap Finance, see there's no rules here. Go add a rule. And I'm going to use, it applies to work orders, and I'm going to go use my tag. So I go find my tag, there it is. So think of it as my sticky note. Where do I wanna apply the sticky note? I can apply it on any individual work order. So I save it. Now it's set up. So again, I set the other charge up at the enterprise. I set up the tag at the enterprise, send it to the location, and then the last thing I did was make the rule. So if I go to a work order, here I have a work order. Going. If I look on the far right, here's my tags. Now I can apply my tag. and it adds the fee. 
that's all there is to it. One of the best suggestions I can give you at this point in time is as you're starting to set up these separate entries with the multiple rules, is always test it. Always test it. Come to the location and test it. Make sure it's working exactly the way you want. Test it before you send it out to all the locations. Pick one location and, and work with it. Another thing you have to watch when you're dealing with these, on these rules, when it comes to things like exemptions. Okay. So if I take a profile here, so here we have on this left side, on the enterprise, a pricing profile. And we just called it, you know, fleet. It's going to be under labor, and here is the rule for it. So if I open this rule up, I'm just simply telling the system anytime I apply this profile on the labor to use that rate and automatically give it a 3.5% discount. So what if I want an exception to the rule? Let's see what we can do. So in this instance, instead of giving this discount on all the jobs that I ever do on this profile, what if I want to exempt or have an exception for specific types of jobs or maybe a service category? So I'm going to add another rule. So again, this is a labor, applies to labor, but I don't want to apply it to everything I do. I can create a tag that I can put on a work order, maybe a category, code or title, or even a specific description of a labor operation or a labor tag. So as an example, let's just say if I do anything in my tires, I want to disable the profile. So I do not want this profile to apply whenever I do anything with tires and wheels. I hit OK. So now I've disabled it. So it'll apply it on everything except that. The, the most important thing you need to remember about rules in here, anytime you set up rules, no matter what it's for, the more specific the rule, or if it's a disable or an exemption, they must go above, above. They always go to the top. The system always works from the top down when it comes to rules. This will never work if I leave it like this. I have to click and drag it above. So what the system is going to do, let me go save that real quick is when I apply this profile to a customer, anytime I'm doing any operation with labor, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to look and say, well, hey, are we doing anything from this category? If we're not, then it will automatically apply the profile. Let's go see how that works. So here I am back in my location. The rules have been updated. Let's go over to a work order and see how it works. So if I take Mr. Smith here with his tires, and let's just go add a oil change job here just so we can have a different. So again, that rule is going to disable the labor for this, but not for this. Okay. Now, before I do this, let's just take this off since we already had this on. We'll just start from scratch so you can see how it works. So I want to set the customer up with the profile. I'm going to go into the customer, D1, 
details and set this profile up. That's going to be under discounts. And I'm going to say he's got the complete profile. Save it. Now it's ready to go. So we're going to add. So we're going to add an oil change and we're going to add some tires. I'm going to add and close. So let's go look at our labor. So I'm going to open up our labor line. See, it's automatically applying this and it's telling you it's active. So if I put in, let's say it's going to take an hour's worth of labor to do this job, that's the rate it's going to use. Now, let's go add a tire job. Let's say we're going to do a tire. Open it up. Again, you see, don't see the profile. If it would have never worked if I would not have put that disable to the top. So now, this is the way you always test. Always test it on a work order. Make sure it's going to work the way you want. And that's it for tips, suggestions, and a little bit on rules. So we'll get more detailed as we go further into setting up the individual entries.